So one approach to responsive design is to um, use a technique called media queries. And with this technique, you load different CSS files based on the device width. And that device width comes from a line of code that's in the HTML file. Now you can do this um, just for one page, or you could do it for a whole site. You know, obviously, if you're working on a whole site, the site-wide version makes more sense because it's just going to be easier to make changes that would affect the whole site. So um, let's go ahead and go to Dreamweaver. And I'm going to uh, create a new file just to get us set up. And I, I'll do a, a three column liquid with a header and footer. And I'm using HTML5 nowadays. Um, so I'll I'll go ahead and create that file and save it. I'm going to save everything that I create in this media query folder. And I've used um, embedded styles, so I want to move those out into a, um, an external style sheet. So I'll, I'll shift click on the rules, right click, and select Move CSS Rules, and then create a new style sheet. And um, I'll call this style sheet desktop.css. And uh, I don't really actually need this one um, to be linked right now, so I'm going to go ahead and just delete it. And then I'm going to make a couple of copies of it. Control C, Control V, Control V. And so my first copy I'll call phone, and my second copy I'll call tablet. In the window menu, one of my choices is multi-screen preview. And this just shows what, uh, what the layout would look like in these different widths. And um, in the upper right, there's a button to edit the media queries. So I can just go from here to there. Now if I want to, I could do a site-wide media query file, and then I would have to specify what I want to call the file. Um, but for now, I'll just do it with this document. You want to make sure that this box is checked, force devices to report actual width. And um, the easiest way to get started is just to click on this default presets button. And then you start with the phone. Now actually, I, I think I prefer uh, a little bit bigger for the phone. And um, I'm, gonna, I'm basing this on this device widths diagram. So um, most iPhones, if you turn them on their side, 480 pixels will fit. So I'm going to use that for my, um, for my phone width. So instead of 320, I'll go ahead and use this um, 480. And, um, and then what I have to do here is in the CSS file box, I have to navigate to the proper file. So it's the phone.css. And um, actually, let me back up because I want to use the existing file. So let me try that again. And then I'm going to select tablet. And um, instead of 321, I'm going to do 481. And again, I'm going to use an existing file, tablet.css. And then finally, for desktop, up, everything looks fine for the, um, for the widths. And I'm going to use an existing file here and then just navigate to uh, desktop.css. I click OK, and then, um, then my logic is, is done. It's, it's working. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this media queries window. And I'm going to save all. And right now, my desktop CSS it has the rules in it. But for some reason, uh, my phone and my uh, tablet.css, I thought I made copies. And for some reason, it's not getting that data. Um, so what I can do is just go ahead and 
um, open up that CSS file and then copy it into um, the tablet file and the phone file since somehow those turned out empty. I must have maybe I didn't save it before I made the copies or something. Okay so now um, when I go back to my design view um, I can see that there are three CSS files here. Uh, so, so most of my work um, now is just to make some changes to these files. Um, so for example, um, for the phone, I might want to get rid of those columns for the phone CSS. And um, so what I would do, I think for my container width, um, I want to change my max width here so that it would it would be um, more like 480 and then the min width um, we can just uh, set that to be maybe something like um, well actually let's go back and look at our responsive widths looks like um, 240 is about as small as we would want to go so I'll go back to Dreamweaver and then set that smallest width to 240 And um, and then for what I want to do now is just get rid of my floats. So sidebar, for example, um, is floating left, so I can just delete that. Uh, and then we have content next to it, which is also floating left, so we can get rid of that. And then sidebar 2 is also going to be um, floating left, so we get rid of that. Um, so and then you would do a similar thing with the um, tablet you know maybe you would just turn that into two columns or something like that so what I want to do right now is just save all and um, you know just for fun just so that we can really see the changes um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, in my container I'm gonna just change the background color so that it'll be yellow in the phone CSS and then in the tablet I'll make it so that it's um, blue and then again I'm gonna save all and um, now if I want to um, preview this I can do a couple of ways I can go ahead and um, come come back to the multi-screen preview get a feel for what they would look like uh, or I could just hit F12 I think that's a more useful approach and here's my document um, now right now my testing server is CIS 9 and I'm not showing the styles so what I want to do is go back and upload the whole folder so that I'm getting those style sheets. And then let's look at this again. Let me refresh. So um, here it is at desktop size. And then as I shrink down, eventually I get to tablet size. Notice I didn't get rid of any of the floats in the tablet view. But eventually I get down to the phone view and for this view I went from um, from three columns to one and clearly what I need to do now is go in and, and change the widths for my um, for my sidebars so let's just go do that really quickly so if I go back to the phone view here um, I can look at my container uh, and then I can look at my sidebar. Right now I set the width to 20% but we could just get rid of that and let it fill in everything. And um, same thing with content. We can just get rid of the width because remember um, that it's inside the container which has a width set already and what we want it to do is just kind of fill it up uh, fill up the whole window. So I'm going to go back to my CSS file here 
And um, I can just upload this one document, the CSS document, making sure that I'm clicking in it first. I can do that right from the document. And then when I come back and um, refresh, then we can see that with those widths suggested, it looks it looks pretty good. So this is what it would look like on the phone view. It would load the um, the links, the sidebar one, and then it would load the content, and then it would load sidebar two. And then if we resize again, now we're in the tablet view, and then now we're in the desktop view. So you can get a feel for how that works just by uh, changing some background colors and adjusting some fo floats and things like that. Now um, some of the other things that you might want to do, uh, you might want to change, um, well after you remove the columns and um, reset the widths or remove the widths, um, you might want to just adjust any white space and um, shrink the fonts because um, even though large fonts would look might look good on a desktop, they're they're going to look kind of um, stupid on a on a cell phone. Now you could also hide content in the mobile versions, and um, another kind of a fun trick is that you can use a background image in your um, title area, your header area, and you can use a smaller image for the desktop. Um, I'm sorry, for the phone version, um, and then because you're doing that in the CSS as a background, then when you got to the phone size, then it would load that smaller image. So that's a pretty nifty little trick. The only concern with that is that when you put an image in the background, it's um, it's not adding any alt text, so you need to have some kind of alternative way to make that content available to people with visual disabilities.